So Disney has really been facing disruption from new media company like Netflix and Amazon Prime for many years now and caught cutting on cable subscription and as well as the pandemic has really created the biggest crisis the company has seen in decades. Yet the company has shown that in the past two years just how strong its mode in the industry is and the transformation of Disney is going pretty well. Today, let's do a full stock review on Disney and see how we stack up on our stock review ranking. Hi guys, Stanley here. I'm the co-founder of ValueInvestAsia.com, an investment portal where we will give you investment news and also in-depth analysis on listed company every single week. So if you're new to the channel, remember to hit that subscribe button so you'll not miss out on any of our videos. And welcome back to our stock review series, where we try to review a stock the same way as we shop for an item like a car or a new phone. Let's look at the fundamentals, what the features are, the risks and how it will stack up in our value to risk chart. Disney is a stock that we have featured before in our premium members club back in April 2020. And if you want to know more about our premium community, you can click on the link below to find out more. Now let's get down and dirty with Walt Disney Company. Disney is an icon of Hollywood. It is one of the big five studios in Hollywood that have really shaped the world media all over the past few decades. However, that also means that the majority of its business is still based on the old world of media consumption, television, movies, and cable. Disney breaks down its business segment into two key parts, media and entertainment distribution, and parks, experience, and product. Media and entertainment distribution will include all video content, such as its free TV channel like ABC, its cable channel like ESPN or Disney and Fox, and also it will include its streaming services like Disney Plus and Hulu. Parks, experience and products are the physical aspect of the business like theme parks, their hotel, their cruise ship, and selling merchandise. In the last nine months, its media and entertainment business generated about 37.8 billion in sales, making up about 77% of its total revenue. It is also a key profit contributor as Disney Parks and Experience segment is still loss making this year. The growth in Disney though is not so straightforward for its traditional business like free TV and cable channel, also known as linear network, the growth is very hard to come by. The transition to digital media and cord cutting trend of cable subscribers means that this business is really under threat. Yet, over the past year, the company has indeed been able to grow its linear network revenue by 4%. Unfortunately though, due to the increase in cost, this segment experienced an 11% drop in operating profit. Its park and experience business is also under pressure over the past two years due to the pandemic. Hopefully with the reopening of the parks, we can expect a stronger recovery of this segment in the future. So the key growth factor for Disney now is its direct-to-consumer business. This includes its streaming services like Disney+, Plus, ESPN+, Plus, and Hulu. The revenue grew 62% year-on-year. Its growth is very encouraging, and Disney+, Plus took less than two years from its launch to reach 100 million subscriber base. That's something that took Netflix 10 years to achieve. Nonetheless, we have to be aware that the competition in this space is really stronger than ever. Almost every major studios now have their own streaming services and even companies like Roku or Amazon Prime are strong competitors in the space as well. This means that even if the streaming business is growing well for Disney right now, it is far from profitable as it needs to focus really to gain scale and growth first. But what makes Disney so special and why it has a high chance of making its streaming services work is due to its huge library of content. Disney has one of the, if not the strongest set of content IP in the media space. And with the acquisition of 20th Century Fox, Marvel, Lucasfilm, it now owns rights to seven of the top 10 grossing movie of all time. And these IP still have so much content in their library that Disney can continue making more movies on them for maybe the next century. So with its strong movie IP, Disney has really mastered the flow of monetizing this content, starting from movies, to spin-offs, to series, to cartoons, to theme parks, toys, and even games. 
The life cycle of this content can continue to live on long after the movie is over. And as Disney built up its direct-to-consumer distribution channel, it controls the entire process of its interaction between Disney and the consumer. That could be something extremely valuable in the future. The main risk for Disney now really comes down to management execution. Management needs to work through the transformation of the company and to focus on its direct-to-consumer approach, as this is where the world is heading. So it needs to manage expectation within its company and prevent company politics from hindering that growth. On top of that, it needs to handle the new relation it has with its talent. An example is the lawsuit between Scarlett Johansson and the compensation plan for Black Widow. If such cases are not handled properly, it might create a long-term effect of losing talents to other studios. Disney fell into net losses last year due to the pandemic. That was its first annual loss in more than 40 years. That really highlighted the seriousness of the pandemic to Disney, but also the resilience that the company has for sustaining profit for more than 40 years. The good news is that the company has turned around and is expecting a profit this year. But it is still far from a record profit it has achieved back in 2016. Nonetheless, I'm very optimistic about Disney at this point and I can really see it reaching even greater heights in the next decade if things continue smoothly for the company. So that's all for the company. Let's head over to our ranking chart. So let's head over to our ranking chart. First, of course, is our value to risk chart. Here's how you can read it. On the vertical axis, this is the risk. So if I feel that the company is risky, I'll plot it much higher over on the upper side. And I'll plot it down here if I feel the company is less risky than the market. As a reference point, the axis will be benchmarked to maybe just investing in the entire market, like buying the S&P 500 ETF and way down here will be equivalent to just keeping our money in the bank and on the other spectrum or way up here maybe is equivalent to buying an, a speculative asset like a cryptocurrency a good way to see it is if i already own the s p 500 etf will this stock at or reduce the risk of my overall portfolio and on the horizontal axis that will be my own expectation of how much value there is in the company all the way to the right means that i'm expecting the stock to massively outperform the market and all the way to the left means that i feel that this stock will underperform the market or even show some negative return we can see that the center exists as maybe just average market return so in terms of disney is it better to just invest in the s p 500 etf in terms of risk i think it is slightly less risky than the overall market the company has at least demonstrated that it can stay profitable for 40 years straight. And in my view, it has one of the strongest content IP in the industry. Enough material to last them for the next 100 years easily. More importantly to me, Disney has really perfected the flow to monetize all this IP. So the life cycle value of each film is so much more compared to other studios content. Mm, I think most likely I see it as a much lower risk company compared to the market. So what about value? Currently it's trading around 300 times its earnings but of course this is just from a very depressed earnings as expected. If we can see that the business will recover back to its peak level in the past and maybe its streaming business can easily offset the decline of its cable and free TV business, then it is trading at around 20 times its peak earning at the moment. That means that if you are confident that Disney can recover, which I am, then the valuation is actually quite reasonable. So where can we plot it? Mm, I think I'm gonna put it right here. Below market risk and slightly better value than the market at the moment. So do you agree with it? Comment down below and let me know. Now let's move on to the next list. In this list, I will rank each stock against one another based on how suitable I feel this stock is for long-term investors like myself. So my favorite holding period, you can see it as forever. So you can see that in this ranking, the higher it is, the stock 
is more suitable for investors like Warren Buffett. And on the other spectrum, all the way down here would be more speculative stocks uh, that people might like to trade on it instead. Since Alphabet was the first stock in our series, I put it in the middle as a reference point. And of course, we have Alibaba below, below as well. So if you want to watch the full review of both these companies, remember to check those videos out. Now for Disney, where should we put it? Mm, is it better than Alphabet? Mm, eh, not really. Alphabet has definitely a much better growth prospect and also is definitely a much higher margin business as well. Disney is not really at that level. Mm, so definitely is below here. But is it better than Alibaba? Hmm, this is hard to decide. I, I, I feel Alibaba has definitely a better business and a much better growth prospect. But the regulational risk is quite high for that company. And it is really hard for us to be able to confidently predict what will happen in the future to Alibaba. Disney, on the other hand, has a higher degree of certainty in its business. Uh, but of course, in the long run, if Alibaba works well, then it could have much better value for the investors. Uh, hmm, I think let's put it right here. Uh, it's a close battle. It's a close battle. Um, but I think that Disney is definitely a, a stock that is slightly better for long-term investor. And as full transparency, I have also added a little information in this chart, which is this uh, hashtag symbol on Disney as well, signifying that uh, these are stocks in my personal portfolio. Right, so there you have it. Let me know how you will rank this stock instead and what other stock you like to see in this list. Comment down below and let me know. Okay, welcome back. And if what we have gone through today is slightly confusing for you, you can consider going through our free investing course at valueinvestasia.com slash free course, where we'll give you the basics of investing and bring you up to speed on how to start buying your first stock. Hopefully you enjoy this segment. Till we meet again, my name is Stanley, Invest Safely.